All right, so we're going to look at an uh, example here of an absolute extrema problem. So it says, find the x values where the absolute maximum and absolute minimums occur on f of x equals 3 over 2x to the fourth minus 2x cubed on the closed interval from negative 1 to 2. Usually absolute extrema problems are going to be on a closed interval. They could ask you the absolute max or min, something that's, you know, on an open interval uh, or, you know, for the entire uh, in negative infinity to infinity, but you know this type of problem here we're going to see with uh, our closed interval with endpoints here. So just a second ago we said absolute extrema can either occur at the endpoints, which in this case are negative one or two, so we have to keep those possibilities in mind, or where the derivative is equal to zero or undefined. So we already know what the endpoints are, so we'll you know make sure we keep those in mind. But right now we have to figure out where is the derivative equal to zero or undefined. So we got to start by finding the derivative. So f prime of x would be equal to, I'll bring the 4 down, I'll multiply the 4 times the 3 over 2, so that's 12 halves, x to the third, minus, bring the 3 down times the 2, 6x squared. Let me just go ahead and simplify this to 6x cubed minus 6x squared, and I want to see where does that equal 0. I can look already and see that that's not undefined anywhere. Undefined would be somewhere where the, there's a 0 in the denominator, so... Um, I'm only looking where this equals 0. So let me go ahead, I'm going to factor out um, 6x squared from both of these, leaving me with x minus 1. Okay, I want to factor it out 6x squared. And then I can see that, okay, this portion right here would equal 0 when x is equal to 0. This portion would equal 0 when x is equal to 1. So I have two zeros. One zero is at x equals 0. One is at x equals 1. Okay? So now I have negative 1, 2, 0, and 1, those are my four possibilities. Negative 1 and 2 because those are endpoints. 0 and 1 because that's where the derivative or the slope is equal to 0 um, on our function. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to test all of these values, um, 0, 1, negative 1, and 2, into the original function in order to see which one of those four values, since those are the only four possible values, gives me the largest y value in the original function and which one gives me the smallest y value in the original function. So I'm going to figure out what is f of negative 1, what is f of uh, 0, okay, 0 from here, what is f of 1 right here, what is f of 2. I'm going to figure out what all of those are equal to, okay. I'm going to do that for a sec. If you want to do this, if you want to do that on your own by actually plugging all the values in, that's fine. I'm just going to do that real quick and uh, so if you want to pause that video, you can. Okay, so I cheated right there, but um, I figured out you know, what all of those values are right there when I plugged. You know, all I did to find these values, I take negative 1, I plugged it into this function and worked it out and ended up being 3.5. Took 0, plugged it in for the x's, and ended up being 0, and so forth and so on. So again, if you want to you know, check me, go ahead and do that. Um, but all it comes down to is plugging these values back into the original function. So at this point, now all I'm looking for for the absolute maximum, I'm looking to see which of these values is the largest number. And that happens to be, you know, 8. So 8 is the absolute maximum. Now when I look back at the problem, it says find the x values where the absolute maximum and minimum occur. So I would say, you know, the absolute max occurs at x equals 2. Now if the problem said find the absolute maximum, I would have said the absolute maximum is 8, since that's the y value. But it said find the x values where the absolute maximum occurs, so therefore the x value that it occurred at was x equals 2. Okay? And the absolute minimum value is just the sm smallest y value, so the absolute minimum value is negative 1 half. The y value it occurs at is x equals 1. So the absolute minimum occurs at x equals 1. So there is an example of an absolute extreme of problem.